Okay, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Ali Magabal, and now we touch on the cellular system and infrastructure based wireless networks. So, we'll touch on the cellular part of the wireless communication. Specifically, I'm following two books. The, the first one is The Wireless Communications Principle and Practice by Rappaport. And also, we'll, uh, you can follow us on Chapter 15 from Wireless Communications by Adria Goldsmith. So, this is Chapter 3. And report and chapter 15. You can allow, of course, you can follow other books if you like. The coverage of this slide is based on report chapter 3. And as I mentioned, uh, if you have any comments, please uh, share with me. Some of these slides or content are shared by colleagues, so I would like to give the credit to whoever is sharing, sharing his slides or content with me. Uh, the topics we'd like to go over includes the basic, the basics of infrastructure basic cellular infrastructure, handoff, infra uh, interference, we'll look at co-channel interference and adjacent channel interference, we'll look at ranking and coverage and capacity. So these are the main topics, but we could touch on other other details there. So in, for, for example, in coverage and capacity, we'll look at cell splitting, sectoring, and zone uh, microcells. So the basic principle, the basic concept of uh, Cellularity is like this. We have to replace uh, one high power transmitter that covers a large area with many or by many low power transmitters covering a small area. So this big area that's covered by one transmitter will be replaced by lots of small cells, pico cells, femto cells, and then we have lots of transmitters that cover the same area. Why are we doing this? The cellular concept provides the solution to the capacity problem. And the available frequency can now be reused by the different towers and different cells. This way, the number of available channels over the service area will equal to the number of licensed channels multiplied by the number of transmitters, because the same frequency which is used here can be reused at another location. Instead of high power transmitter, we use lower power transmitters and the energy will decay, so we can reuse the frequency at another location. That is the basic concept of cellularity. Components of the cellular system. Uh, we can think of three main components, or four, four components for now. We have the mobile stations, of course. It doesn't have to be a car, it's just a mobile unit. And then we have the base station. These are the base stations, showing uh, as a symbol of tower. The base station is the bridge between the mobile station and the mobile switching center, the MSC. Because they relay the signal, whether it's control or information, voice or data. Remember, we could have control or information, or we could have voice or data from the mobile station to the mobile switching center. And that's the function of the base station. Uh, the mobile switching center controls a cluster of cells. Base stations are connected to the mobile switching center via uh, fiber optics or microwave links. So these base stations has to be connected to mobile switching center, which in turn is connected to the public switching telephone network, which includes the line, the landlines and uh, other telephone networks. So four things, MS, MSC, BS, and the BSTN. In some countries, there is only one MSC, and this is why we have a flat rate for all mobile calls, because all the calls have to be connected to the mobile switching centers, whether you are close to me or in another city. In some other very big countries, there could be more than mobile one, uh, one there, there could be more than one mobile switching center. Forward reverse links. To get used to terminology, let's start with the base station here. The base station is usually higher than the mobile station. So just to get used to the terminology, we call the transmission path from the base station to the mobile station the forward link or the down link. So from the base station to the mobile station, the forward link, or the down link. Now we'll call the other one 
the reverse link or the up link not to forget think of a mobile station walking uh, a person with a mobile station walking and looking at the tower so we have down link and then you need to look up for the reverse link setting and receiving types and techniques in mobile station or in, in communication in general we could have um, simplex where we have one-way communication we can have half duplex where we have two-way communication but one at a time like in a walkie-talkie or in full duplex we have two-way simultaneously so th this is this figure shows you the three cases we have simplex half duplex where we have one at a time and full duplex like mobile phones and two-way communication why this is important because you need to know that we get full duplex by almost doubling the resources so if you have one channel then it can be used for one-way communication if you have two channels then we can have full duplex how do we go into deblocking how do we get the two-way communication we can use frequency division duplexing fdd we can have time division duplexing tdd as we're going to see in the next slide so frequency division duplexing it means that we are going to use the entire time slot for communication in the down link and in the up link with two different uh, carriers so the distinction is in frequency and we're, we're sending over all the time this is called frequency division duplexing in the case of time division duplexing we have a common carrier the same frequency or same channel but we are dividing the time slots between the down link and the up link so some time slot for down link then we have up link down link up link and so on this is called time division multiplexing the implication of celerities once we get cellular what is so special about being cellular system compared with wireless systems in general since in, in cellular systems we have cells we reuse the frequency we reuse the channel so we need to start thinking about interference we need to handle the interference also because of the mobility uh, usually associated with cellular systems there is mobility management and there are two issues there first we need to locate the users to be able to initiate the calls not only that we also need to perform handoff or, or handover of calls if we want to maintain active calls when the user move between the cells more about this will be discussed in the coming slides handling the interference issue how do we handle the interference each transmitter base station is allocated a subset of frequencies of the total available channel and neighboring cells are allocated different sets of channels so for example here we'll give set of frequencies to a b c d e f and g all neighboring cells will get different set of frequencies to avoid interference those sets of frequencies will be reused again but only far away to minimize the interference level so a here will have a similar frequency set as a here as a but notice that they are not adjacent cells this process is called frequency reuse or frequency planning in this case for example we have a cluster made of seven cells and then we'll look at the frequency reuse factor of one over seven because the set of channels will be divided over seven cells we'll get into more details here but handling the frequency interference handling the interference is by making sure the first step is by making sure that we plan for frequency reuse correctly channel assignment strategies we can think of two ways to assign the frequencies to frequency plan uh, the channels fixed allocation or dynamic allocation In fixed allocation it's simple because every channel will have a fixed number it's less it's less efficient because there is higher probability of blocking what if we have only 50 channels here and 50 users requested the call somebody else wants to make a call then his call will be blocked if all the channels allocated to the cell are occupied a new call will be blocked this can be improved by implementing a borrowing strategy 
so if I am full in this channel B if all the channels are used I can borrow from the next or the third but in that this has to be done through the mobile switching center the second way of thinking is to uh, use dynamic allocation when a call request is made the serving base station will request a channel from the MSC it will contact the mobile switching center and ask for the channel that will guarantee less blockage probability it will increase the utilization of the channels because busy cells will have more resources but it's going to require more processing uh, and we need to know what is the channel occupancy the traffic distribution so we can assign the channels accordingly and the mobile switching center allocates a channel only if it is not being used by the cell or by any other cells at a minimum distance so even if there's a channel we have to make sure that we don't give similar to the next uh, we don't give a channel with frequency similar to the adjacent channel so it requires some processing and thinking so we have two ways fixed allocation simple easy less efficient we have dynamic a bit complicated but it's more efficient in terms of less blockage probability now let me leave you with a question a question about the evolution of uh, wireless networks wireless cellular networks what are the main characteristics of different cellular network generations first t first generation second third fourth fifth sixth generations please write down in the comment section what do you think is the main difference between the first generation second third fourth five fifth and sixth generation and uh, if you can guess about what could be the difference in the future of coming generation that would be great so we'll see you in coming videos more about cellular systems and hexagonal cells thank you